time to tell the story that way. Yeah. We were to get amnesia of the money that was put out, you know, how the game has really worked and things of that nature, you know. Yeah, but that's because they want to make the Caucasian yeah. happy. You yeah. understand? Whatever that the news media come up with, they all want. those Caucasian that uh, against a powerful black man in this country, sure. they don't want that, see? Uh, Don King was the most powerful boxing promoter yes, in the world yes, yes. for numerous of years. Years, years. And they yeah. don't want a black man with that power. It's the same thing like with Obama yeah, now. Yeah, same President thing Obama. Obama. Same you know, thing. Just, thing. <laughs> with, with all the crisis that George Bush left oh my God. this yeah. country in, yes, yes. They, uh, they forgot all about forgot that. It's it. Obama's yes. fault. Right. <laughs> Everything come up is Obama's fault. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's and sure and the too. thing is, the Caucasians are in charge of all the news media you got. And seeing they, they put on and show you what they want you. And then our people, they can't look past that. You know, you know and, and, accept everything that this white man say. Well, you know, it, it goes like this right here. It's in all walks of life. That's why it's so important that we have strong characters in the community. That it, you know, some people will go along with it. It doesn't, it's not a matter that you're going to lose your job. Because the way the jobs are structured today, yeah. You know, you just can't fire a person. Right. You know what I mean? They can get a, a, a jailhouse lawyer, yeah. whatever. The cat is could be on, on in jail for twenty years. He still can be in jail. He can get them off and get their job and then comp get compensation. I've been working in a job for twenty six years. I know how the game go. Right. And the idea is that we, as a people, just will not stand up for one another. And that's the reason why you have the trickle down effect in our communities. Places like this right here is not represented like it should. Um, People want to sell alcohol across the street because they, you know, oh, well, you ain't nobody. Yeah. <laughs> you don't treat yourself like nobody. You know, you're going to shoot up the community, you know. Yeah. And so all those things, it's just one thing, one thing dominoes all the way down the whole effect. So until we stop, yes. it's not going to stop. Yes. When yes. we say no to, to riding on that bus, you know, like Rosa Punk said, yes. then the bus will... Will, will yeah. concede, and they will put that bus in a in a uh, museum somewhere. Right. Retire and put it in a museum. But until we say stop, it's not going to stop. Yeah. You guys at this community, in this community here, eighteen years in this gym, short of twenty, have done a a, 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 a holy work because I know the healing that goes on. You might not recognize me. Person have a place to come, get out their frustrations. Uh, especially in terms of a young man, and now young women also, that they're learning the technique of life, and you're hitting that bag, the speed bag, and things of that nature, boxing, challenging each other. Well, that's what the, the game of life is all about. You know, it's about challenging, you know what I mean? And then when you look at the, the, the expense of the, in terms of the young people that's going to school, minorities that's going to, going to college for business, well, you better take in some boxing because that's what business is all about. You know what I mean? What makes me feel so proud is... When I observe grown men coming in, you know, like they 30, 40 years old. Sure. Now, and my wife had started working with them when they was kids. Right. Like 13, 14, 15 years old. And they come in from all over now. And looking for Miss Kelly. Sure. Yeah. Miss Kelly, Miss Kelly. You understand? That's the reward that make me uh, proud. Sure. You understand? Sure. Because sure. they, they uh, knew what my wife thought of them and how that she she looked out and neutered them sure, you sure. Know, all those years, you know, and, and and that's basically what our young kids need today. Sure. They need someone to give them value time. That's See, true. most of the adults, they're afraid of our kids today. Sure. But the only reason our kids like that is because they, they're calling out for help. Sure. And the, the thing they need is a adult to have valuable time to be with them, to teach them, to nurture them, you know what I'm saying? Well, that's what my wife has well, done. You know what I, I often say in sermons, uh, uh, Mustafa, is that if the children are mentally on the corner, uh, the young people on the corner, the older people are too. Mm -hmm. If the men is crazy, then the women are too. Yeah. So when we recognize that we're just one, right. so when we recognize we're one, see, I've been in them places where you scan your eyes and look for someone that even have a speck of you in them. I've been in these places. I've been in different circles. I've been around the world. I know the game. Yeah. So the idea is that if one is crazy, the other is crazy. Right. When we recognize that we are one human family, right. then we can lift ourselves up. So, all right. So the fight is um, uh, December 11th. 11th. 
2009 at 7 p.m. Yeah. And you're talking about 18 fighters. I mean, 18 matches. 18 matches. 18 matches. And that the, the name is the North against the South. Okay. Friday night amateur boxing explosion. And amateur. Now, this will give birth. Those that, that now, how, how does this work in terms of going, their, their walk towards the Golden Gloves? And, and do you guys know when the Golden Gloves is? Well, the Golden Gloves uh, normally is uh, February and March. Okay. Six weeks of every year. But fights in between, like the gold, like the uh, uh, diamond Batman. gloves and all that kind of thing, are independent shows. It helps, you know, keep uh, a young man sharp. You know, it helps him to evaluate himself okay. as to his weaknesses or his strengths oh, okay. as he's pursuing uh, the the latter. Okay. And they also had the silver gloves, you yes. know, for the junior, for the junior. Now, when, when is the silver gloves? Well, we hoping it'd be like December the fifth. So before y'all, before y'all match, yes. And then those, would those kids, those young people, come over to y'all match, or if it's, yeah. uh, if it's some if good it's ones, a, yeah. If it's that, if it's good ones, then, you know, we always try to pick, uh, pick out the best juniors, you know, stand to be on our card to make it a uh, very interesting bout. Uh, but on so. the other hand, if if that fight isn't until thirteenth, then that kind of puts a damper yeah, that, that on minutes, us yes. because then they don't want to take a chance of their fighter getting hurt. Oh, right, on the 11th. Yeah. Okay, of course, of course, because they're going two days away. Yeah, and plus, like, I think uh, the winner of the, the, uh, the uh, silver gloves go to the national. That, yes. Yeah, so that's why that that's a, that's, that's a priority you know, with other individual bouts. Okay, now, will you guys ever host the Golden Gloves here in Newark? Will that ever? It, yes. Well... Let me say this to you about the Golden Gloves. The Golden Gloves is institution has been for 40, 50 years, sure. I guess. So. The real question is, who runs the Golden Gloves? Sure. The next question is, what is the nationality of the children who make up the Golden Gloves? The next important question is, what do the children get out of? Okay. As opposed to the people who have the franchise. Okay, I see. I see. And I submit to you, the people who have the franchise, they get the Cadillacs or the limousines or the vans, etc. Where our children, who have made this possible, sure, get two dollar ninety nine cent trinkets. Right. Don't even get a new pair of sneakers. Okay. You see? Okay. And that's a shame. Sure, sure. That's a shame. Uh, because our children are being used as stepping stones. You see, it's one thing to stand on a man's shoulder, but it's another to step on his shoulder. Sure, sure, you see? sure. And my problem with it has always been that uh, the black men who are the trainers. Sure. They're not really protecting these children because this thing is being perpetuated, you see, time after time after time, year after year after year sure. after year. And that, again, goes back to your original question. What's wrong with us? Yes. Why don't we love each other? Sure. Why don't we respect each other? Sure. You see? Uh, and until we do, there's always going to be that overriding problem. And it is, you know, it's not just in, in the boxing world. On, on every street corner now, you see these bodegas. I said, what the heck is a bodega? We used to have mom and pop Sure, sure. On yeah. every corner. In fact, your, your grandparents, I think, was, used to have a store on Prince Street. That's right, yes. You see? And had a laundry on yes. Prince Street. Mm -hmm. Now, all of that's been been uh, taken away with uh, people who don't look like yes. us. You see? Mm -hmm. And, and the interesting, not that I have anything against them doing that, but the thing that bothers me is we can't go to their neighborhood and do the same thing. Can't do nothing. <laughs> Better not even stop. <laughs> Better not even go. Better not even stop. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 what are we saying? Yes. We're saying that. Um, also, your. 
This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The Quarantine Report. I'm Amy Goodman. The FBI and New York police departments are facing new calls to finally open their records related to the assassination of Malcolm X, shot dead 56 years ago at the Audubon Ballroom in Harlem, February 21st, 1965. This comes after the release of a deathbed confession of a former undercover New York police officer who admitted to being part of a broad New York police and FBI conspiracy targeting Malcolm. In the confession, the former officer, Raymond Wood, who died last year, admitted he entrapped two members of Malcolm's security team in another crime, a plot to blow up the Statue of Liberty, just days before the assassination. On Saturday, Ray Wood's cousin, Reggie Wood, read the letter at a news conference at the Shabazz Center in Harlem. It was my assignment to draw the two men into a felonious federal crime so that they could be arrested by the FBI and kept away from managing Malcolm X's Autobahn ballroom door security on February 21st, 1965. In his letter, Raymond Wood also revealed he was inside the Autobahn ballroom at the time of Malcolm's assassination. At least one other undercover New York police officer, Gene Roberts, was also inside after infiltrating the security team of the Organization of Afro-American Unity, the group Malcolm founded after leaving the Nation of Islam. Both officers, Wood and Roberts, were part of the Bureau of Special Services and Investigations, or BOSI, a secret of political intelligence unit of the NYPD nicknamed the Red Squad. Following Malcolm's assassination, police arrested three members of the Nation of Islam for his murder. But questions about the guilt of the men have lingered for decades. In his letter, Raymond Wood openly says one of the men, Thomas Johnson, was innocent and was arrested to, quote, protect my cover and the secrets of the FBI and the NYPD, unquote. Ray Wood's letter echoes claims in recent books by Manning Marable and Les Payne that some of Malcolm's actual assassins were never charged. In a moment, we'll be joined by Raymond Wood's cousin, Reggie Wood, who released his deathbed confession. But first, I want to turn to the words of Malcolm X himself speaking after his home in Queens was firebombed just a week before his assassination, February 14th, 1965. My house was bombed. It was bombed by the black Muslim movement upon the orders of Elijah Muhammad. Now, they had come around to, they had planned to do it from the front and the back so that I couldn't get out. They had, they, they covered the front completely, the front door. Then they had come to the back, but instead of getting in directly in the back of the house and throwing it this way, they stood at a 45 degree angle and tossed it at the window so it, it glanced and went onto the ground. And it, the fire hit the window and it woke up my second oldest baby. Uh, uh, and then it, but the fire burned on the outside of the house. But had that fire, had that one gone through that window, it would have fallen on a six-year-old girl, a four-year-old girl, and a two-year-old girl. And I'm going to tell you, if it had done it, I'd taken my rifle and gone after anybody in sight. I would not wait. Cause, and, the, and I say that because of this. The police know the criminal operation of the black Muslim movement because they have thoroughly infiltrated it. Because they have thoroughly infiltrated it. Those are the words of Malcolm X right before his assassination, right after his home was firebombed in February of 1965. Uh, just days later, he was shot seconds after he took the stage at the Audubon Ballroom. We're joined now by Reggie Wood, the cousin of Raymond Wood, author of the new book, The Ray Wood Story, Confessions of a Black NYPD Cop and the Assassination of Malcolm X. Still with us, civil rights attorney Ben Crump, who attended that news conference uh, with... Uh, um, Reggie Wood at the Audubon Ballroom, now the Shabazz Center, where Malcolm X was assassinated 56 years ago. Um, Reggie, thank you so much for joining us. You read parts of the letter um, this weekend. Talk about your cousin, um, Ray Wood, and what you understand happened, the conspiracy he alleges that he was a part of by the FBI and the New York Police Department to assassinate Malcolm X. Good morning, thank you for having me. Um, Ray was was a complicated man. Uh, I think be based on uh, his past experiences, 
he, he, he lived with a lot of uh, fear and caution on a daily basis, which he instilled in me over the past 10 years. But uh, Ray was a person that lived as a, he, he lived, he lived as a, as a very quiet and, and reserved person because of what he had experienced. He, he witnessed some horrible things firsthand and also realized that he was a part of it after the fact. And so therefore, um, Ray was told by his handlers that not to repeat anything that he had seen or heard, or he would uh, join Malcolm. Therefore, for 46 years, Ray separated himself from the family and um, in fear that he would put us in danger. Uh, Ray lived alone many years, and he um, finally, in his final years, uh, when he realized that he was uh, his cancer was uh, reoccurring, he wanted to reconnect with family because he didn't want to die alone. So uh, I volunteered to uh, move him to Florida so that my wife and I could take care of him and get him back and forth to his